Welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. For today's adventure, we're going to be talking about this little black box right here. This might be the ultimate woofer tester. I'm going to tell you what it is and help you figure out if you need one or not. And the adventure starts right now. This unassuming black box does not look like much, but when you combine it with some software on your computer, it turns into the Dayton Audio Test System or DATS. Before I can show you all the things this little black box can do, I've got to calibrate it. It's a pretty simple process. Start by heading over to the Parts Express website where you can download the software and the quick start guide. After you've got the software downloaded, go ahead and fire up the software before you connect the DATS. Connection is pretty straightforward. The DATS comes with some test leads with alligator clips on the end. All you have to do is plug the red into the red and the black into the black. And then use the USB cable to attach it to the computer. There is a blue power light on the front. When you plug the USB cable into the computer, that will turn on. Now what you're going to do is take the test leads and connect them to each other or short the test leads. You need to do that in order to verify the test leads and calibrate the test leads. Then over in the software, click on the impedance analyzer menu and down at the bottom it says test lead calibration. You click on that and you get a dialog box that pops up to remind you to short out the test leads. All you got to do is hit OK and wait a second for it to do its thing. And right there, it's done its thing. It tells us that the test lead has a resistance of 0.567 ohms. If my memory serves me correctly, it needs to be less than one ohm, and you can verify that by checking the owner's manual or the quick start guide. Next, we're gonna attach the test leads to the two little terminals on the front. There is an internal resistor between these two terminals, and we need to calibrate it based on that internal resistance. I think it is a one kilo ohm resistor. So once again, go to the impedance analyzer menu, head down to impedance calibration, and you're just gonna click okay. It takes a minute for it to do its thing and it will verify the one kilo ohm resistor right there. So it's all set up and ready to go. Now that it's calibrated, I can show you how to use it. Now this is really handy if you find yourself with a lot of used gear or just mixed parts laying around so you can test these speakers and find out their TS parameters. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to take this old woofer that I've had for years and I'm going to prop it up on these clamps. I'm doing that because you don't want to block the pole vent that's on the back plate. So if you have a vent, make sure you do the same thing. You can use anything to do this. Then it's just a simple matter of connecting the test leads. The red goes to the positive, the black goes to the negative. That's pretty self-explanatory. And in the software, there's this row of buttons on the left-hand side. You wanna look for measure free air parameters and click on it. When you do that, you're gonna get this weird whoop sound coming out of your speaker. The DAT software will then display this impedance chart and it will display most of your TS parameters over here on the right. There's gonna be a peak in that impedance chart and that peak corresponds to the free air resonance of the driver. But we're not done yet. Next, we need to measure the diameter of the cone. To do this, you just get a ruler or any kind of measuring device and measure the distance from top of the surround to top of the surround across the speaker. So in the software, over on the right hand of the screen where it says driver parameters, you want to enter the piston diameter in inches. Next, we need to add some mass to the cone. Anything will do. The trick is to make sure you weigh it before you add it to the cone. I'm just using a roll of tape and I grabbed the kitchen scale from the kitchen. I always like to write down the measurement on the roll of tape in case I forget. We enter that in the software here where it says added mass method. Make sure you click on the little circle so that it will use the added mass method. Then over on the left hand side, you click on measure VAS. The software will remind you to add the mass to the driver. Make sure it's there, hit okay. Then you'll be able to hear the impedance sweep. 
the software will display the MMS and the VAS and your TS parameters are now complete. It's also real handy if the manufacturer does not have the TS specs posted on their website. In fact, just the other day, one of my patrons reached out to me because they needed help designing an enclosure. They were looking at a 10 inch DS18 they were going to order from Parts Express. They couldn't find the TS parameters. They went ahead and ordered the subwoofer anyway. And when they got the box and opened it up, they found in the owner's manual some limited TS specs. When we modeled the subwoofer in WinISD, we ended up with a five cubic foot box for a 10 inch subwoofer. So we think the specs must be wrong. And if we had a DATS, we could break in the subwoofer, read the specs, and we'd know for sure. Speaking of Patreon, let me say thank you to these guys right over here who are my supporters on Patreon. And I want to give a special shout out to my newest patrons, Adrian and Salvador. Hey guys, thanks for joining the team. What else can you do with the DATS? Here's the next cool trick. You can use the DATS to verify the tuning frequency of a ported subwoofer enclosure. This is real handy if you're trying to design and build your own enclosures and want to make sure that you got it right. Just hook the terminals up, positive to positive, negative to negative, red to red, black to black. Pretty simple, straightforward process. Then over in the software on the left hand side, just hit the impedance sweep button. And that's going to give you this chart right here that has this two peaks with the dip in the middle. That dip in the middle is your tuning frequency. In this case, it's 35 hertz. I was shooting for 37 hertz. I'll take 35, that's even better. The chart will also give us some other important information. You want this impedance chart to be nice and smooth. And you can look over here and see we got a couple of notches. These notches tell us that something is wrong with the enclosure. That could potentially impact the sound, but both of these notches are above 200 hertz, so they're gonna be well above our crossover frequency. So it's unlikely to impact the performance of this little subwoofer. And that's just barely scratching the surface. Here's another cool trick. You can use the DATS to test crossover components. So I'm hooking a capacitor up to the test leads and I'm gonna check this capacitor to see if it's performing within its specifications. And this 20 microfarad capacitor is measuring 20.02 microfarads. Now there's tons of other information here, but we're gonna save that for a specific video on how to design a passive crossover. Now I'm going to measure an inductor. This is a perfect example of why a DATS is handy to have because there's no label on this inductor. The little sticker with the values fell off of it. So I don't know how many millihendries of inductance this thing has. So let's run the test and find out. And we get 2.6 millihendries. Well, 2.605, but that 0 0.005 is well within the tolerance levels for this inductor. You also get a nice impedance chart showing how the AC resistance changes as a function of the frequency. You may have heard people say that passive crossovers burn up power because they have internal resistance. This is what we're talking about right here. While we're at it, let's go ahead and test this 2.4 ohm resistor and see what we get. Check it out, 2.4 ohms. And here's the reason why I bought a DATS. I want to verify the tuning frequency of this enclosure right here. This is my passive radiator build. On the left, I got a 10 inch Ultimax. On the right, I've got a 12 inch aluminum cone passive radiator. Now you can tune a passive radiator by adding or removing weights to the back of the passive radiator. And the only way to really know how much weight to use is to measure it. So let's measure it and see what we got. When I built this enclosure, I was shooting for a very low tuning frequency and I measured it off camera before I started filming. And so I know what my tuning frequency is about 22 and a half Hertz, which is a hair lower than I was shooting for. And I'm enjoying those ultra low frequencies, but that's not the best setup for most car audio subwoofers. So I'm gonna pull some weights off of it. And hey, you probably noticed this, something down here between 20 and 30 Hertz is not quite right. I've got a very odd impedance response here. This tells me that something probably has shaken loose inside of the enclosure since the last time I tested it. I'm going to open it up and check it out and see if I can figure out what's going on. And this is why anybody who's serious about building their own speakers should pick up a DATS because you have no idea if your enclosure is built right unless you test it. Clearly something's wrong with this enclosure. Something's loose, something's rattling, something's resonating. I don't know what I need to do to fix it, but if I didn't have the DATS, I wouldn't know that I needed to fix it. And that is exactly why you need to consider picking up a DATS. 
If you're serious about building speakers, you need to have measurement tools so that you can know for sure that you've done it right. Click on these two videos right here to see the build logs for these two enclosures. And click on this subscribe button right here and I'll see you on the next adventure.